This Monday, the 21st day of April, still feels like winter out there. Sometime the warm weather will get to us whenever that is. I guess it won't be in April this year. And obviously, as busy a day as you could possibly have. We got a lot of stuff to get to with days from the uh, NFL draft. And now that has been heightened, of course, with what went on over the weekend. The trade that the Jets kept denying which everyone knew was a joke, has now been culminated. We told you all along it had to be culminated before the draft because Revis had had to get to Tampa and had to be examined before the trade could ever happen. And everyone in the world knew they were negotiating with Tampa. I mean, except the Jets would never admit it. And so now Revis is gone. The Jets are the first team in many years, I think 13, to have two picks as high as 13 in the draft. So now we'll see what they do with them. One of the questions I have is who's making the picks. And we have a lot of other things to get to, including what was a very, very good basketball weekend for the locals. I was at the Nick game. It was fun. You know, it, it, it was a very different feel because that's the first time since the Ewing days that you were in the Garden with actually an idea that you're going to win a playoff game. You know, we've been there a couple of times, but those were cameos, again, where bad teams, and they're ready to see your season. The series are over before you ever got anything going. By the time the games were in New York, you're just trying to win a game. This was different. This had a different feel, and obviously a very different feel because the Knicks won this game with their old guys in defense, and that, that made it a lot of fun. So we'll talk about that. P.J. Carlissimo will join us as the Nets get ready for game two. They played as well as they humanly uh, could uh, against the Bulls in game one. And if the Bulls have any any health at all, you know they will be back in this series. They're a very proud, well-coached group. So we'll talk to P.J. about that. We should have a uh, special guest in a couple of minutes. I can't tell you exactly what time, but I'm expecting one, so we will uh, wait for that. And obviously, we begin the show with the headline. Uh, Just moments ago, they held a press conference in Tampa where they were obviously extremely uh, jubilant to have the best defensive player. And that's what he is, folks. That's what he's been. That's what he was every day that he was a Jet, uh, the best defensive player in the NFL. Now... You're going to say he's damaged goods? Well, we'll see. But the Jets made the only trade they could make because they had a injured player looking for a lot of money. It was a bad situation from their standpoint. They didn't have a lot of places to go, and they did not get fair value for the player. That's the bottom line here, okay? Say what you want about what you think this means, and what it means is 2000, 2013 – is just a is a absolute stepping stone to 2014. 2013 to the Jets is what 2013 is to the Mets. A way to get to 2014. That's all it is. Pray something falls into place and a couple of things break right. And the Jets most likely are not going to have a Harvey to salvage their season. Because let's be honest, the Jets the Mets season early has been completely, completely salvaged by Harvey and Buck. They have completely saved what otherwise would have been a disastrous thought. And they've made it more than acceptable. They made it okay. If not just great when those two are either in the box or on the mound. They have been sensational. Throw in Duda, who has one of the you know highest uh, OPSs in baseball, the other day, two of the three guys who were leading the baseball in OPS were half their own Duda, believe it or not, per at bat, which is amazing. So, I mean, that makes it a very strange thought. But the bottom line is the Jets were not in position to get full value for the player. They had no intention, none. This isn't an idsick move, folks. This isn't an this is not a – we know it's not a Rex Ryan move. This isn't an idsick move. This is a Woody Johnson move. Woody Johnson had no intention of ever, ever paying Revis. Ever. He got his marching orders. It's got his marching orders when he got here. You're keeping Rex Ryan. You're trading Darrell Revis. Case closed. That was before he took the job. That came with the keys to his office. You're keeping Rex. You're trading Revis. Case closed. That's it. It's a Woody move. This is a get rid of the money move. The Jets got less for 
a Hall of Fame corner, the best defensive player in the NFL, and the player who is a higher above the second best player at his position than any player who stands in the NFL right now. Take a quarterback, the gap is smaller. Take a wide receiver, the gap is smaller. Take a tackle, the gap is smaller. The biggest gap is Revis to the next corner in the entire league. And the gap is wide. That's how good he is. And in a pass-happy league, he is one of the few people who can change that in a game. In his prime, can he come back from a knee? Well, we've seen a lot of guys come back from knees. And he did not get a guaranteed dollar. All right, you would have had to pay him this year. So what? Other than that, not a guaranteed dollar on the contract. Not one. $96 million after one year, the Bucks can walk on a deal whenever they want. Are they going to walk on it? No. Why are they going to walk on a play this good? This guy knows he can play. If I were Revis, I'd play for $16 million every year, and I have to earn it just by being on the team. I know I'm going to be on the team. I'm that good. It's a no-brainer. Unless, it's, unless he gets devastated by an injury and has his career destroyed by an injury, he's going to be there playing. He's that good. He's not good. He's the best. And we could sit here and say, the Jets are moving forward. The Jets are now doing it the right way. Hey, how do you know the Jets are doing it the right way? Who's picking these guys? Who in that organization gives you confidence that they can pick players? They got draft picks now. They've completely got rid of a lot of players. And if they bring a, and if they bring a quarterback onto this roster this week, they are going to cut. They are going to cut their quarterback. They are going to cut Sanchez June 1, if they bring one on this roster, which I'd say is probably less than 50-50, but a possibility. And if they do, they will say goodbye to him after June 1st because it makes more sense that way. So he's not a given to be on the team either. I know you don't care about that. I understand that. But here's, here's the bottom line. No matter what garbage comes out of Rex's mouth, okay, and if you think he liked having to buy into this one, no matter what nonsense comes out of his mouth, just remember this. His team that he's just had, that before it was decimated, has won six, six of its last 19 games. That's before it was devastated. It won six of its last 19 games. That's less than 33% of its starts. That's before it got savaged and got devastated, the roster. That's before Landry left and before Revis left and before Bell left and before DeVito left. And I can keep going on and on and on. And they have no playmakers and they have no idea and they have right now no quarterback because the only one they've had who's been successful has been beaten up mentally to the point where you just don't know if he could play here anymore. Did he have success? Hey, Sanchez has a resume for his first couple of years, but he's been beaten up so badly mentally now, he doesn't know which end is up. And, I, and listen, I don't know if you care whether Rex is here after next year or not, or whether Rex gets another job or not, or what the deal is. And Rex can tell you all the stuff about how they'll be great defensively. And say, a bunch of go-. Well, listen, at least he's not saying they're going to win the Super Bowl next year. So the idea that you can live with him saying they're going to be great defensively. They weren't great defensively at any point except the first five or six games he coached here. That's the only time they've ever been great defensively. Other times they've been good. That was the only time they were great. Lee caught up with that a long time ago. And the bottom line is, okay, you get get asked to pay a lot of money in personal seat licenses and a lot of money for your tickets. And you would be paying a lot of money this year and spending a long travel day getting to a, seat, getting to a stadium to see a bad, and you can underline bad, football team. Because that's what you're going to have in 2013, a bad football team. Maybe that's in my, Maybe you don't care about that. And maybe you're ready to go build for 14 on and you're excited about all the young players who are coming. And it's a new day. Okay. A lot of bad franchises have a new day every three years. 
And then they stink for three more years, and they have another new day. And then they stink again, and they have another new day. You had Woody last night say on a conference call that he's as optimistic about this year as he's ever been. Okay? If he can sell you that, he can sell you anything. Look at the roster. The team stinks. It's going nowhere. And it has a lame duck coach. And no idea. It is totally dysfunctional. Can Itzik pick players? I don't know. He's never picked one. So I don't know if he can or he can't. No, does anybody else. Has that team been a good drafting team? No, they have not. No, they have not. They were pretty good. Pretty good. When Mangini and Tannenbaum were here. Because those guys picked Revis. Let me see them pick another Hall of Famer. They can pick nine. They can pick 13. You can give them 16, 22, and 25. Add it all together. They won't find a Revis in this draft. Back after this.